And of course, from the 2019 uh, Bahrain Grand Prix, there was plenty to talk about and there was plenty of stuff that did occur in what was one of the most exciting races to happen in a very long time. Now, we're going to start off with the most controversial and the most key, I think, incident in the Grand Prix. And that was Lewis Hamilton and his overtake on Sebastian Vettel and then Sebastian Vettel spin. So, first off, at turn one, Hamilton was very close behind, dummy to the inside, and Sebastian fell for it and cracked under pressure, let's be honest. Hamilton then got a great run on him through turn two and turn three on the run to turn four, DRS, and then pulled to the outside like you can see here. And I think Lewis knew that if he could, like he did, go around the outside, he would have Sebastian, really mentally especially, beaten up uh, very good. So here, Hamilton is going to have the momentum going around the outside. Vettel is obviously going to try his hardest to keep Lewis at bay, but it is going to be very hard to keep Lewis at bay. You can see here, before the apex of turn four, Hamilton already pulling ahead because the outside line at turn four, when going wheel to wheel, is the line to be on because you then have the racing line on the exit and the momentum going into turn five, turn six, so on and so forth. So Hamilton here really does have the line. And even though it is going to be close between the two, Hamilton is definitely more likely to make the overtake than Vettel is to keep Lewis Hamilton behind. Then you can see here, this is the apex of turn four. Hamilton clearly pulling ahead with the extra momentum and speed coming up to turn four compared to Vettel. And of course, Hamilton was on the racing line on the approach uh, to turn four and Sebastian was on the dirty side of the track. And then Hamilton started to pull ahead. Now the criticism here for Vettel mostly is the the panic that he clearly showed in this incident. So you can clearly see here, Lewis Hamilton is basically ahead in this move. And now Vettel, what Vettel should be doing, because he has the extra straight line speed and the faster car, let's remember that Ferrari were one, two in the uh, Grand Prix for so long and had the best car. What he should do is settle in behind and try and repass Hamilton later on because there was i think uh 15 to 20 laps left in the grand prix so he should have just accepted that lewis passed him because of a better run around the outside and then try and get him back which he could have and also sebastian did have one lap fresher tires compared to hamilton so it wasn't like uh vettel was defenseless at all in this incident but then, as you can see right here, Hamilton clearly ahead. And this is the moment where Sebastian loses it all. This is the moment right before, a millisecond before, he spins the car and goes round. And then, of course, spins the car. Now, for me, Sebastian, again, is guilty of what he was guilty of plenty of times in 2018 and plenty of times in his career. He cracked under pressure. He absolutely 100% bottled it. First starting at turn one, falling for Hamilton's dummy, which is a simple racing move that Hamilton did. It's such a simple thing to do and a simple tactic to do when you're racing someone and he fell for it. Then got passed around the outside by Lewis Hamilton. And because Sebastian is not emotionally controlled, and tends to panic in high pressured situations he then did this and of course lost his front wing after a tire vibration and i have to say again has caused his own downfall and i'll say again just like i did in the race watch along i do not see how this guy is an all-time great driver he makes this same mental error so many times when a high-pressured situation comes up. 
He cracks under pressure, panics, and just bottles it. All-time great drivers such as Schumacher, Senna, Hamilton, Prost, Nicky Lauda. Those drivers would not commit the same mental error as many times as Sebastian has. And he has done it plenty of times all the way back to 2010 and also 2011 in that season where he dominated. Sebastian does this time after time after time after time. And he's done it plenty of times since 2017. For example, Baku, Singapore, the star slight crash at Mexico where he hit the back of Lewis Hamilton, even though he wasn't massively at fault. And then, of course, Baku in 2018, where he went down the inside of Bottas and went wide. France, where he hit Bottas. Hockenheim, where he bottled the lead of the Grand Prix in a high-pressure situation where the rain was starting to fall. Monza 2018. By the way, that incident at Monza was very similar to that. Hamilton had him round the outside. Vettel panicked, tried to get him back immediately instead of waiting to get him back, which is what he should have done and which most people would do that are mentally strong. He hit Hamilton and spun. He didn't hit Hamilton in this incident, but he still spun. And then you have Suzuka going up the inside of Max Verstappen when he didn't need to and then spinning with Ricardo. And now Bahrain 2019, he has done it yet again. Now... If this is the only error he makes in 2019, then maybe he can have a successful season. But it has become clear to me that Sebastian Vettel has not learnt from his mistakes. And for me, mentally, is too weak to compete at the very top level of Formula 1 right now. Lewis Hamilton mentally, for example has him absolutely done in and beaten to a pulp. And by the way, the Hamilton versus Vettel debate is clearly over. It's no real debate as to who is the better driver, and especially when it comes to the mentality, Vettel is very, very weak. And if Sebastian is going to improve, it's clear what he has to do. See a, a therapist or a psychologist and improve upon this with some different methods or something like that i'm not the biggest fan of sports psychologists or people like that but if it helps and it can stop these errors happening then do it and admit you have an issue when it comes to you know panicking in these moments and panicking in high pressure situations because if he continues like this and tries to Pretend there is no issue, this will happen again and again and again and again and again and again and again until Ferrari decides, you know what, Seb, you've had plenty of time, you haven't done the job for us, Charles are number one, it's time that you leave the team. And if he continues to do this, that is exactly what will happen. So there you go, hopefully he can improve upon this but guys i don't see him improving upon this this is sebastian vettel the same driver that makes the same mistake time after time again why would he now start to learn right now when he could have done so two or three years ago when he was a bit younger or even eight or nine years ago when he was a lot younger for me this is just the the way this guy is when he gets in a wheel-to-wheel -wheel combat, he panics, makes simple mistakes, and because of that, and because of the circumstances of certain things that have happened in his career, for me, he is not an all-time great. And I don't think anyone out there can pre uh, present me a strong enough case for this guy being an all-time great. I don't think anyone out there can present that to me, other than... He's a four-time world champion and then throw out all his stats when what you should do is look at the circumstances behind that. And the circumstances show that he is not as good as his stats show. It is clear to see that. So for me, Sebastian is, again, 
committing the same errors. And for me, this is just the person he is. And for me, is a mentally fragile and weak driver. But now I'm going to move on to the next incident analysis. Now, if you watch the race watch along, you may have um, heard me say that Verstappen, I think, was at fault for this incident with Carlos Sainz. But after seeing a slow frame by frame replay, and also with the uh, screenshots I have here, my opinion is now different. So you can see here, Carlos Sainz is ahead at the moment as he approached the braking zone for turn four. And then Max Verstappen dives down the inside to try and hold on to P5 in the Bahrain Grand Prix. And it looks like it's gonna be a very close battle into turn four. And it got even close or closer than close into turn four as right there they made contact left front to uh, right front in that incident and Sykes of course had his front right puncture but now we're going to cut to Verstappen's on board now when I watched it at full speed yesterday I thought this was Verstappen's fault but after watching it slowly and going you know through it frame by frame for me this is not Verstappen's fault this is for me a racing incident and I'm going to show why so he can see science is pulling ahead into turn four then because he has more momentum he's on the racing line and as DRS pulls ahead even more now, at this point, where Max dives down the inside, he does have room to go down the inside, and there is room for him to make that move. You can clearly see that right there on that on board. There is room to make the move work, and there is enough space, I think, for two cars to get into that corner from that screenshot right there. But the reason the contact happens is because Carlos, I think, thinks the move is over and that he can now turn in to turn four um, ahead of Max Verstappen. But of course, with the way Verstappen is, he is not going to just let you go through without a fight. And of course, as we all know, he then threw it down the inside and that is the point of contact. So for me, the reason it's a racing incident is because both drivers caused the accident to happen. First, because Sainz turned in more than he should have. He should have gave a bit more space on the inside. But then because Sainz turned in, the reason the contact happened was because Verstappen clumped over the inside curve and went right into the side of Carlos Sainz. And then as you can see there on the onboard, Sainz had a front right puncture. So for me, that is not Verstappen's fault. They were both at fault for causing that collision. And for me, that is only a racing incident. So there you go. And now we'll move on to the final two incidents, which is uh, first off, we'll go with the Stroll Grosjean one. So this is the approach to turn two at the very start of the Grand Prix. You can see there Grosjean on the right of Stroll, and then you've got Pierre Gasly in the Red Bull, uh, slightly to the left of Stroll's car. Now Grosjean is on the outside for turn two, and Stroll is on the inside. Now, the reason this is Lance Stroll's fault is because Grosjean here on the right is giving Stroll room. He knows Stroll is there, and is prepared, and is going to run wide or wider deliberately into turn two than you would so that he can get through the corner and so can Lance Stroll and you can see there Stroll is trying to turn into turn two but the reason the collision happened as I'll move on to this picture that's the point of contact the reason it happened is because Lance carried too much speed into the corner and you can see that if I go back here because look he's turning into turn two but the car just won't go in as much as he wants it to. And he goes into the side of Roman Grosjean. And then you can see there Grosjean 
heading more so towards uh, off the track than being on the track. And for me, Stroll was at fault for that uh, crash because Grosjean gave him space to to get through the corner with him. Grosjean did not turn in. Stroll just carried too much speed in and understeered into Roman Grosjean. And the uh, the damage he got was deserving because he caused his own downfall, just like Sebastian Vettel. And the final analysis we'll go through is uh, the Antonio Giovinazzi and Danny Kvyat collision. Now, my opinion is also different for this one. In the race watch along, I thought this was uh, Giovinazzi's fault, but I think this is now a racing incident, just like the Verstappen and Sainz one. So here you can see... Giovinazzi on the run down to turn 11 with DRS gets a great run in the Ferrari powered Alfa Romeo. And then dives down the inside at turn 11. Now, he has enough of his car alongside to make this move. This is not a wild move. This is not overly aggressive. This is a fair move by Antonio and is absolutely in the right to make this move. But the reason the collision happens. And the reason it's a racing incident is because they both, just like Verstappen and Sainz, caused this crash to happen. Because, as you can see right here, because Giovinazzi has gone onto his left front tyre onto the inside kerb, that will now push him wider. Even if it's slight, it will push him wider than he wants to be into the corner. But Kvyat has not given Antonio enough room to get through the corner. If Kvyat went a bit wider, they would have gone through the corner just about okay. But Kvyat was intent on using uh, the racing line. And Giovinazzi, even though he was fair in his diving down the inside, because he clipped that curb, it then created this contact. So for me, just a racing incident i don't think um anyone is at fault for this crash they're both at fault and that for me makes it just a racing incident uh, another racing incident of course uh for danny kvyat who has plenty in his career but those are the incidents from the bahrain grand prix of 2019 don't forget to comment down below uh what you thought of my analysis of these incidents but it was clear to see for me, or in my opinion, um, that those drivers that were at fault or weren't at fault, that's the way it happened, in my opinion. And also, it's great to be able to analyse so much from what was a fantastic 2019 Bahrain Grand Prix.